Ladles and jelly spoons, welcome to this month's Retro Roundup here on Kai Mathy's YouTube channel, coming at you live via videotape from the Orbital Broadcast Bunker. If you're new to the channel, the Retro Roundup is where we have a gander at some of the games from years gone by that were hitting the shelves, hoping to become the next bestseller. With me as always are Pat White Muffin, the voice that made extreme esports sound like Northern Opera, and Keith, our resident T-boy and Badger expert. Yeah, because uh, nothing screams video game history like a good cup of tea and a Badger. And don't forget the biscuits, Pat. A good game discussion is nothing without a proper biscuit. What's your favourite biscuit? Let us know in the comments down below and I'll get some in. Today we're diving into a selection of games released over the past 30 years starting with 1994. First up we have Urban Strike, an action shoot 'em up video game developed and published by Electronic Arts. It is the third instalment in the Strike series, following Desert Strike Return to the Gulf in 1992 and Jungle Strike from 1993. The game was released on multiple platforms, including the Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo and Game Boy. Urban Strike maintains the top-down perspective and helicopter-based gameplay of its predecessors. Players pilot a helicopter and various other vehicles through a series of missions involving combat and rescue operations. The game mixes shooting action with strategic elements, such as resource management and mission planning. The game is set in a near-future United States, where a media mogul turned presidential candidate named H.R. Malone has plans for a sinister coup d'etat. The player's mission is to stop Malone's evil plans by completing various missions that range from reconnaissance and rescue to all-out combat. Urban Strike received generally positive reviews upon its release. Critics praised the engaging gameplay, variety of missions and strategic depth it brought to the shoot 'em up genre. However, some criticism was directed at its difficulty level and the controls, which some players found challenging. Overall, Urban Strike is remembered as a solid entry in the Strike series, continuing the successful formula of its predecessors whilst adding new features and improvements. In a court scene, Sean, before you start the New York level, is a scary scene that seems like it foretold a piece of history. When you start, Malone's laser beam shoots out a beam that hits the south tower of the World Trade Center towers. What's scary is the game's date is 2001, the same year of the terrorist attack. <laughs> Ah, urban strike, where you save the world one pixelated helicopter at a time. It's like a Tom Clancy novel if Tom Clancy had a joystick. Echo, The Tides of Time, an action-adventure video game developed by Novatrade International and published by Sega. It is a direct sequel to Echo the Dolphin and continues the story of the titular dolphin protagonist Echo. The game was released for the Sega Mega Drive, Sega CD and later on the Game Gear and Master System. Echo Tides of Time retains the side-scrolling action-adventure gameplay of its predecessor, where a mix of puzzle solving and exploration elements. Players control Echo as he navigates underwater environments, solves puzzles and farts buddies. The game continues the story of Echo the Dolphin, who saved the Earth's oceans from an alien threat in the first game. In the Tides of Time, Echo must once again protect the oceans from a new menace. This storyline involves time travel, with Echo visiting different periods to stop the Vortex Queen and her brood from threatening the world. Echo The Tides of Time received positive reviews for its innovative gameplay, challenging puzzles and atmospheric presentation. The graphics and sound design were particularly praised, especially the Sega CD version. However, some players found the game's difficulty level to be high, similar to its predecessor. The game is considered a classic and remains well regarded for its unique gameplay and immersive underwater environments. Echo Tides of Time is remembered as a standout title on the Sega Mega Drive and Sega CD platforms, a worthy successor to the original Echo Dolphin. Echo the Tides of Time, an underwater adventure that's part puzzle, part action. 
all dolphin. It's like Flipper with a time travel twist. I tried to teach a badger to swim once, you know. Didn't go quite as well as Echo's adventures, I must say. And uh, I just want to remind you chaps that the court hearing is on Thursday. Now, did you know the cover art to Echo 2 were painted by Boris Veljo that I am probably pronouncing incorrectly? Sorry, Peru. Boris also contributed to the cover of Echo the Dolphin, you know, this game's predecessor. I have to say, Pat, I'm not really sure that's what the kids would call a Sigma fact. Not like the fact that the Sega CD version features a CD quality digital soundtrack different from the original cartridge game and full motion video. No cap. Let's jump forward to 1999 with... What is it like to be afraid? System Shock 2, a first-person action role-playing survival horror video game developed by Irrational Games and Looking Glass Studios. It was published by Electronic Arts and is a sequel to the 1994 game System Shock. It has garnered a significant cult following and critical acclaim for its innovative gameplay and atmospheric storytelling. System Shock 2 combines first-person shooting mechanics with role-playing elements. Players must manage their character's skills, inventory and resources while exploring a derelict spaceship filled with hostile creatures and AI. Set in the year 2114, the game takes place on the starship Von Braun, a faster-than-light vessel. The player assumes the role of a soldier who wakes up from cryosleep to discover that the ship has been overrun by a genetic infection. As a soldier, the player must unravel the mystery behind the infestation, dealing with the rogue AI Shodan and various mutant creatures along the way. System Shock 2 were highly praised for its deep engaging gameplay, complex story and atmospheric design. Critics and players appreciate the game's blend of genres and its innovative mechanics. Despite its initial commercial underperformance, the game has achieved a cult status and is often cited as one of the greatest video games of all time. And yet, it's not in our Tony's book. Sad times. Ah, System Shock 2's influence can be seen in many later games, don't you know? Particularly the Bioshock series, which was also developed by Irrational Games. The game's blend of FPS and RPG elements has inspired numerous titles in the survival horror and immersive sim genre. System Shock 2 remains a landmark title in the history of video gaming, celebrated for its innovation, depth and enduring impact on the industry. Dummy ammunition, live ammunition, moving targets, stationary targets, live targets. System Shock 2, the game that taught us that all of space is scary and artificial intelligence is even scarier. And don't even get me started on inventory management. Anyhow, in addition to using Dark Engine, the game also uses some of the animations from Thief, most notably the zombified crewmen with the shotguns and pipes. They use a portion of the animations from the guardsmen in Thief, specifically when they're walking around searching for your character and when they run over to attack you. In Thief, part of the training mission includes a little basketball court at the beginning of the game. In System Shock 2, this basketball is carried over and is found on a ledge on the street level of the very first training mission. Go around the pillar to the right of where you arrive on the street and you can mantle up to a sloped surface. On the flat part of the ledge will be the basketball. It bounces very appropriately too. On the recreation deck will be a basketball court towards the last part to explore in the level. You have to be on the upper running deck to shoot, but if you make a basket with the basketball or even just clip the rim, you'll get a very funny email. Be sure to bring it up in your PDA. There was going to be a Dreamcast version of System Shock 2, but it was cancelled. Oh, I oh, think I've just got that email. Oh, dear. Oh, no, no, it's my lawyer asking me not to bring the pet badger on Thursday. Now then, the localised German version of the game were ever so slightly modified for fear of banning. Some corpses were removed, e.g. the hanged man, and all the blood were coloured green. And finally, the voice of Shodan was done as in System Shock by Terry Brosius, the wife of Looking Glass audio director Eric Brosius. Speaking of the first System Shock, if you've not watched our original versus remake video on System Shock, be sure to check it out after this video. Link as always, down below. Russia. You are worthy. Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver. 
an action-adventure video game developed by Crystal Dynamics and published by Eidos Interactive. It is the second game in the Legacy of Kain series, following Blood Omen Legacy of Kain. The game was released on multiple platforms, including the PlayStation, Microsoft Windows and later the Sega Dreamcast. And we did our own retrospective review back in the day. Again, be sure to check it out after this video. Link in the description down below. Soul Reaver is a third-person action-adventure game featuring a mix of exploration, combat and puzzle solving. Players control Raziel, a former vampire turned wraith, as he seeks revenge against his creator, Kane. Set in the dark gothic world of Nosgoth, the game follows Raziel, one of Kane's lieutenants, who is betrayed and cast into the abyss. Raziel is resurrected by the Elder God to become his Soul Reaver, tasked with destroying Kane and his vampire brethren. The story explores Whoa. themes of revenge, destiny and the nature the of the soul. Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver received critical desire. acclaim upon its release. Reviewers Kane. praise the innovative gameplay mechanics, atmospheric graphics, brain. compelling story and voice acting. The game's ability to seamlessly transition between the spectral and material realms was particularly lauded. Yeah, soul Reaver is considered a classic and standout title in the action-adventure genre. It has influenced many Many subsequent games with its blend of storytelling, exploration and puzzle solving. The game's success led to several sequels including Soul Reaver 2 and Legacy of Cain Defiance, further expanding the rich lore of the Legacy of Cain series. The game's enduring popularity have kept it in the public eye, with fans calling for a remake or a remaster to bring the experience to modern audiences. Its innovative mechanics and deep narrative continue to be celebrated as high points in video game history, don't you know? Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver, where you play as Raziel, a wraith on a mission of vengeance. It's dark, it's atmospheric, and it's got more twists than a badger in a tornado. I once saw a badger in a tornado, you know? Quite the sight, really. But this Raziel chap sounds fascinating. I wonder what his choice of brew is. SM, maybe? Darjeeling? And if uh, 2024 San Diego Comic Con is anything to go by, there may indeed be a remaster or indeed a remake on the way. A Soul Reaver statue were on display at the event and it was accompanied by a rather exciting plaque. The plaque credited the statue to the Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver 1 and 2 remaster. Oh, nostalgic onlookers were thrown into a frenzy and it's fair to say that a lot of people were looking forward to an announcement during the event. However, the announcement never came. And as a result, doubt has been cast over the original leak. Meow! 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 meow. Maybe it was just a tease or a mistake. I don't know. They really got our hopes up with that plaque. The mystery remains, leaving fans to wonder about the future of their beloved series. What's next for the legacy of Kane Soul Reaver? Only time will tell. Now, First off, there were a graphic novel based on game. It were published by Top Cow. And surprise, surprise, all the red blood outside of the cutscenes was coloured green in, yes, you've guessed it, the German version. Sil Reaver's main theme, Ozar Midrashim 1.1, was composed by Kurt Harland from Information Society, and it's featured on their 1997 album, Don't Be Afraid. Now, speech samples from the game were used by the industrial band Velvet Acid Christ in their songs Dial 8 and Mind Flux, Trip Zone, mix on the album Twisted Thought Generator. And the intro from this game were partially used at the beginning of the doom metal band Tristalia's third album, The Last Grief. Moving on to 2004 and we're looking at our first ever PSP game. Dynasty Warriors for the PlayStation Portable, also known as Shin Sengoku Mutsu in Japan is a hack and slash action game developed by Omega Force and published by Koei. It is a spin-off of the popular Dynasty Warriors series, which itself is a spin-off of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms strategy games. Dynasty Warriors on PSP retains the core gameplay mechanics of console version, focusing on large-scale battles where players control historical Chinese warriors from the Three Kingdoms period. The game involves fighting through hordes of enemy soldiers and completing various objectives while on the battlefield. Dynasty Warriors for the PSP received mixed reviews from critics. Whilst the game was praised, 
best for bringing the Dynasty Warriors experience to a handheld platform and for its faithful recreation of the series' core gameplay, it faced criticism for technical issues, such as long load times and the occasional frame rate drop. Some reviewers also felt that the mission-based structure was repetitive. Despite its mixed reception, Dynasty Warriors on PSP were successful enough to pave the way for future handheld entries in series. The game demonstrated the potential for large-scale action games on a portable console, influencing the development of subsequent titles in genre. The release of Dynasty Warriors on the PSP helped expand the series' reach to a broader audience, particularly those looking for a portable gaming experience. The game's success contributed to the continued popularity of the Dynasty Warriors franchise, leading to numerous sequels and spin-offs on various platforms, don't you know? Overall, Dynasty Warriors on the PSP is remembered as a noteworthy attempt to adapt the large-scale action and strategic elements of the console games to a handheld format maintaining the series' signature style and gameplay. <laughs> oh, Dynasty Warriors, because who doesn't love single-handedly taking on an entire army? If Badgers had battalions, they'd be unstoppable. No cap. <laughs> Virtua Quest also known as Virtua Fighter Cyber Generation's Ambition of the Judgment 6 in Japan. It's an action-adventure game developed by TOS and published by Sega for the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube. It's a spin-off of the popular Virtua Fighter series, but significantly diverges in gameplay style and presentation. Virtua Quest blends action-adventure gameplay with role-playing elements. Players control a young protagonist named Sai as he navigates a virtual world called Nexus, uncovering secrets and battling baddies along the way. The game's story revolves around Sai, a young boy who enters the virtual world of Nexus in search of valuable data chips known as Virtua Souls. These chips contain fighting abilities of characters in the Virtua Fighter series. As Sai collects these Virtua Souls, he learns new combat techniques and uncovers a sinister plot orchestrated by a group known as the Judgment Six. Virtua Quest received mixed reviews from critics. While some praised its attempt to blend the Virtua Fighter universe with an action-adventure format, others felt that the execution fell short. The common criticisms include the game's repetitive combat, simplistic platforming elements and lacklustre graphics compared to other titles available at the time. The storyline and character development also received mixed reaction, with some players finding it engaging and others considering it underwhelming. Virtua Quest remains a unique entry in the Virtua Fighter series, notable for its departure from the traditional fighting game genre. Whilst it did not achieve the same level of acclaim as other titles in the series, it offered a different perspective on the Virtua Fighter universe and provided an action-adventure experience that appealed to younger audiences, don't you know? Overall, Virtua Quest is remembered as an ambitious spin-off that attempted to expand the Virtua Fighter franchise into new genres even if it didn't fully succeed in capturing the same level of success as its predecessors. Virtua Quest, a blend of RPG and fighting games set in the Virtua Fighter universe. It's like someone decided to mix their action figures with their role-playing dice. Because, you know, why not? I mean, nothing says strategy like a roundhouse kick. Now, it's safe to say that us here at the Orbital Broadcast Bunker can't do any of this without you at home and your unwavering support. And by support, I mean your likes, your shares and your subscriptions. We are so close to hitting our first proper YouTube milestone of 500 subscribers. And that's all thanks to you chaps at home. We are so close, but we still need you to hit that like button like you're trying to save Princess Peach from Bowser and share these videos with your friends, family, and that one guy who still thinks that the Sega Saturn was the pinnacle of gaming. You know, I tried to make a cup of tea with a Sega Saturn once. Yeah, it didn't, didn't work well. It's your engagement that keeps our retro spirit alive. And we've got so much more that we want to share from obscure gems to beloved classics. So please don't forget to subscribe. We promise more laughs, more nostalgia, and maybe even a few surprises along the way. And by surprises, it means more Keith related mishaps. Hey, they keep things interesting. So hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe to Kai Mathy's YouTube channel. Join us 
is on our trips down memory lane. I mean, who wouldn't want to see more of Keith's unique approach to gaming history? And tea making tips. Maybe one day he'll stop talking about badges and play a video game himself. He might even make a decent brew. Finally, here we are at 2014. These games might not scream retro, but get ready for a shock. They're already a decade old. PT Playable Teaser, a first-person psychological horror video game demo developed by Kojima Productions under the pseudonym 7780s Studio and published by Konami. It was designed to be a teaser for the cancelled game Silent Hills, a project that was to be led by Hideo Kojima and filmmaker Guama del Toro, with actor Norman Reedus as the protagonist. PT is played from a first person perspective, immersing the player in a nightmarish and surreal environment. The gameplay involves exploration, puzzle solving and psychological horror elements. Players navigate a seemingly endless looping corridor in a haunted house, encountering increasingly disturbing and cryptic events. The narrative of PT is intentionally obscure and fragmented, adding to its eerie and unsettling atmosphere. The player character, later revealed to be voiced and modelled after Norman Reedus, awakens in a house with a looping corridor. As the player progresses, they experience increasingly bizarre and horrifying events, including ghostly apparitions, unsettling audio cues and cryptic messages. The storyline hints at themes of domestic violence and supernatural horror accumulating in a revelation about a tragic family incident. PT were met with critical acclaim for its innovative approach to horror and its ability to invoke genuine fear and tension. It quickly became a phenomenon with many players and critics praising its atmosphere, sound design and the effective use of minimalistic horror elements. Despite its status as a demo, PT had a significant impact on the horror genre and gaming culture. Its sudden removal from the PlayStation Store in April of 2015 following the cancellation of Silent Hills and Hideo Kojima's departure from Konami only increased its mystique and cult status. PlayStation 4 consoles with PT installed became sought after items due to the game's unavailability. PT's influence can be seen in subsequent horror games, inspiring developers to focus on atmosphere, psychological elements and innovative storytelling techniques. The anticipation for Silent Hills and the disappointment over its cancellation have made PT a landmark title in video game history, remembered for its unique and terrifying experience. PT, a game so terrifying it makes System Shock 2 look like a walk in park. It's like they bottled pure nightmare fuel and called it a game. Is is that the one where you're stuck in a hallway? Well, it sounds like the time I mixed up the badger feed and Yorkshire tea. This town, Akiba, has hosted many strange happenings of late. Akiba's Trip, Undead and Undressed, known in Japan as Akiba's Trip 2, is an action-adventure video game developed by Acquire and published by Exceed Games in North America and Europe and by Acquire in Japan. It is the second game in the Akiba's Trip series and is set in the Otoku culture hub of Akihabara, Tokyo. Akiba's Trip Undead and Undressed is an open-world action-adventure game with RPG elements. Players explore a virtual recreation of the Akihabara district in Tokyo, engaging in combat completing missions and interacting with various characters. The game follows the protagonist Nanashi who is transformed into a synthester, a type of vampire that feeds on the social energy of Haki Harbour's residents. Nanashi joins a group called the Akiba Freedom Fighters to uncover the truth behind the synthester menace and to protect Haki Harbour. The key to defeating synthesters involves exposing them to sunlight by stripping off their clothes, making for a unique and quirky combat mechanic. Akiba's Trip Undead and Undressed received uh, mixed reviews from critics. Praise was directed for its unique setting, humour and the novelty of the stripping mechanic. However, some criticism was aimed at the repetitive combat, technical issues and the overall simplicity of the gameplay. Despite mixed reviews, Akiba's Trip Undead and Undressed has garnered a cult following, particularly amongst fans of otaku culture and quirky Japanese games. The game's faithful recreation of 
Akihabara and its playful take on vampire lore make it a unique entry in the action-adventure genre. Its success led to the development of further titles in the series and ports to various platforms including the Nintendo Switch. Akiba's trip Undead and Undressed remains notable for its distinct premise, blending of genres and its celebration of otaku culture. This blood will lead you down a difficult road, I fear. But in the end, your fate is your own to shape. Akiba's Trip, Undead and Undressed, where you strip vampires in broad daylight. It's quirky, it's eccentric, and it's very, very Japanese. Stripping vampires? Well, I thought teaching a badger to swim was odd. Now, the game features many advertisements throughout Akihabara from other video games and animes. Example are Conception to Children at Seventh Stars, Mind Equals Zero, Hyper Dimension, Neptunia and Genkishen. And there you have it, ladles and jelly spoons, a whirlwind tour through some of the standout games of the last 30 years. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, don't forget to hit that like button. Yeah, because your likes are the only thing keeping us from becoming retro ourselves. Share this video with anyone who needs a little bit of nostalgia in their life. And subscribe. We've got plenty more tea, badges, and game discussion coming your way. Thank you, as always, for tuning into this month's Retro Roundup. I'll leave you with this. Have you ever wondered how much deeper the sea would be without sponges? Until next time, keep the pixels bright in your tea off. Okay.